data sequences in R. The function for that is just SEQ for sequence and then you can actually specify where to start and where to end. So if I would run this line, you can see that I have this sequence 3, 4 and 5. So basically I have three integer values in that sequence. Please note that this was actually just the short version of this line down here. So it is a sequence from 3 to 5. I can also write it down that way and I would get the exact same output. Another way of how I could specify this, I could say I want a sequence starting from 3 and I want it to be of length 3. So I want 3 integer values in that sequence. And if I would run this line, I get the exact same result. You could of course also specify the steps which actually make up this sequence. Because in those lines over here the step was always the default step of 1. But in this case, let's say we want the steps to be of 0 0.5. So this sequence should be then 3, 3.5 and 4. And if I would run this line, you would see that I now have this sequence where those values are only separated by the value of 0 0.5. I think it is a quite convenient feature of R that it does not really matter in which order you would put your arguments in this function. Because in this example down here, I was exchanging the position of the argument length and the argument by, and if I would run this one, I would get the exact same result. So again, the order of the arguments within this round bracket does not matter. So this was actually how you can create data sequences. The next thing I want to show you is the paste function. Let's take a look at this simple example. So as you can see, what we did in this example is we were actually inserting the character x, y, z and then we were adding or pasting to this character those numbers from 1 to 10. So the output should be a vector consisting of uh, 10 values. And as you can see here, we have those values. Those are character values because they are specified within those quotation signs. So it is x, y, z and x, y, z always stays the same. But then we have the numbers from 1 to 10 as the second part of those characters. You can also use a vector which consists of totally different data types because in this vector we have a character, we have a number and we have also integers, but it does not matter because the output will always be a character value. So as you can see down here, we now have this output where we pasted the character, we pasted a number and we pasted integers to the initial XYZ character. And the output is always the same data type, it is a character output. If you actually want to manipulate the spacing down here, you can use the separator argument and then you would use empty quotation signs for this separator. So as you can see the spacing is now gone. Could you think of any application where this paste function can be useful? Just think a few seconds about it. This could be very useful, for example, if you want to create labels for plots or for some kind of listings. Alright, let's take a look at the repeat sequences. If you have some values which you want to have repeated several times, you can use the repeat function. So it's REP and then you can specify the values which you want to have repeated and then you can specify how often you want to have it repeated. So let's run this line. As you can see we have the vector 3, 4 and 5 and this vector is repeated 3 times. So 
the second part specifies how often it is repeated. You can also call it times equals three and this would do the exact same thing. In this case, I am not specifying a vector with a concatenate function. I'm just specifying the sequence from one to 10. As you can see here, we now have one to 10 repeated three times. Let's now create the object x to exemplify another way in how you can use the repeat function. So now I'm actually specifying that I want the object x and each element within this object should be repeated three times. So this is basically in contrast to the times function where you have the whole sequence repeated step by step. But in this way, by specifying each equals three, each element within a vector is repeated three times and only then the computer jumps to the next value within this vector, as we can see down here. And we can even combine the times and the each arguments. As you can see, now we have every single value of our initial object repeated nine times. So it's three times three. Let's take another look at index positioning. So for example, if we have the object x, which goes from four to 20, I now want to know which value within the x object exactly equals 10. Please note the double equal sign in this case. And if I'm running this line, the computer tells me now the index position of the value 10 within this object x. And as you can see in the object, this number 10 is my seventh position. And this is basically the exact reverse of stating a number within box brackets, which we already did in the previous video. Because again, if I would use the box bracket, the computer would actually tell me which value I have on index position three, which in this case should actually be a six. I would highly recommend that you also take a look at the exercises I prepared for you on those last lectures so that you actually see that you understood the content of those videos and that you can actually try it on your own.